feet or uh, stomp your feet or clap or whatever you'd like. Uh, either of those, any of those would be great. So um, we're going to sing about our God who is, is for us um, and uh, we need, to, need not fear anything. So we're going to sing, sing that now. separate us hell and death will not defeat us he who gave his son to free us holds me in his love neither high nor death can separate us hell and death will not defeat us he who gave his son to Holds me in his love. Sing with joy now, our God is for us. The Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. Raise your voice now, no love is greater. Who can stand against us if our God is for us? Sing with joy now, our God is for us. Our God is for us, which is a great thing, isn't it? Uh, He's given us His Son. Uh, I'm going to invite you to to say a few words. Uh, What we've just sung or heard uh, comes from uh, Romans 8. Uh, So uh, some words are going to come up on the screen. So I'm going to say uh, the first part, and then I invite you uh, to then say uh, what is down below. So I'll say what's in italics, and you can say... um, what is, what is below. So we'll do that here, and if you're at home, uh, please uh, join in with these words as well. So reading from uh, Romans 8, verse 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus has died. More than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble 
or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Well, welcome to you. It is uh, great to, to be together as God's people. Uh, so welcome to, to you here. Welcome to you at home. Uh, well done. Daylight saving. We'll see who, who turns up in an hour. Um, and if you do that at, at home, well, they can get the... They can get the replay uh, then. If this is your very first time uh, with us at Stanhope Anglican Church, then uh, I want to welcome you. Uh, my name uh, is Steve. Uh, we haven't been meeting here for very long, uh, so it is uh, an exciting time for our church, and we're really pleased uh, that you can be with us today. i uh, love to, uh, to, to get to know you uh, more uh, after, after this morning. And maybe you have been part of our church for years, but it is your, your first time now uh, in, our, in our new church home. Uh, so, yeah, really pleased that you've been able to, to come along and to be here uh, today. This is an all-age service. Uh, it's school holidays, middle of the school holidays, long weekend, daylight saving. Uh, so there's no uh, kids program. Uh, so we're, we're all in today. Uh, we do have a parent parents' room and a crèche just up the back, so those with um, little kids, and if you need to, to head into one of those rooms, uh, you can do so, and you can still see and hear uh, what is going on uh, right here. Uh, we've been looking at Mark's Gospel uh, for the last, uh, last few weeks, looking at Jesus unmasked. Just who is he? That's the big question in Mark's Gospel, seeing who is Jesus. We've seen his power, uh, we've seen his compassion, uh, the amazing things that he has done, and we've seen that really Jesus does only what God can do. Uh, that's what Jesus does. And his disciples, they've been with him for, for at least two years now. So we want to look this morning at, well, where are the disciples at? In their own understanding of who is Jesus, where are they at? So we're going to look at that this morning, and that should help us to be able to see for ourselves um, where we're at in seeing who is Jesus. So uh, Donovan and myself, we're going to be uh, helping you as we look at Mark's Gospel uh, today. Uh, so I'm going to hand over uh, to Donovan uh, right now to, to get us into to thinking about this. Thank you, Steve. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name's Donovan, lovely to be here and to uh, help us explore uh, how the disciples are going. Uh, but I'm going to do a little activity first, and uh, I've been shopping, and I've got some items to show you. The problem is, we're all so well socially distanced that it's going to be hard for you to see what they are. So I need uh, two volunteers, one I've organised, uh, Lachlan, could you please come up? But I also, I feel like I would like a lady, perhaps a lady for the second one? Are there any brave ladies who'd like to come up and also be a helper? I was thinking grown-up ladies might like to, but if not, if not, if not, I'll go. <laughs> Katie? Okay, all right. Uh, I'm just trying to show, we, we, we're very much interested in all ages, aren't we? That's what I'm trying to show, different, different ages. And um, Okay, so if you could get, please, that's fine, stand there. And if you could stand there, Katie, that's great. Maybe just stand here, Katie, so we can see you. Um, now... So what I'm go basically, it's pretty easy. I'm just going to um, pull out some items, show it to you, and you've just got to say what it is. Actually, Jess, could you just come over and uh, give them a microphone? Um, so all you do is hold the microphone and then just um, just say what it is. Just practice, make sure the microphone works. Maybe say your, say your name. Katie. Okay, there you go. Lachlan. Lachlan. So how hard can it be, right? You, you, can, you can speak into it and we can hear you. Uh, could you all hear Katie and, and Lachlan then? Excellent. So this is easy. Um, Oh, oh, sorry. One more thing. Uh, we're also going to blindfold you. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, Jess, if you mind, please just give them one of those. Um, we're using a COVID-friendly uh, face mask, but if you could please put those over your eyes. 
You okay putting that on, Lachlan? <laughs> that's a good look, Katie. <laughs> yeah, that's great, Lachlan. Yeah. I think a photo, maybe a photo shot of the photo album there. Um, okay, so let's just make sure that works. Katie, how many fingers am I holding up? I have no idea. No idea, excellent. And what about you, Lachlan? How many fingers am I holding up? I have no idea. No idea. All right, excellent. Okay, let's try this. Uh, who will I go with first? Do, 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 do. Another problem I've had is that someone shrunk my items as well, so um, don't call it out if you can see it. If you've got incredibly good eye vision, don't say what this is, but can you, can you say what that is? No, excellent. Okay, Lachlan, here we go. I'm going to hold this in front of you, and all you've got to do is just tell people what you see. I see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Just to hold that microphone a little bit higher. What was it again? I see nothing. I see nothing. Oh. Katie, let's see if you can do any better. Ready? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that might be cheating if you can touch it. Sorry, Katie. Okay, have a look at that there. I'm just holding it in front of your eyes now. I'll just hold the microphone up close so we can hear what you tell us what, what you can see. Um, I can't see anything. <laughs> <sighs> okay. I reckon maybe it's too small. Maybe that's the problem with the item. Let me try another thing. Here we go. This one will be easy. Okay, Lachlan, what have I got here? Right in front of your eyes, what have I got? Um, I can't see anything. Can't see. Okay, all right. Katie. A puppy. <laughs> <laughs> mm, no, sorry, sorry, Katie. Um, yes. All right, why don't we uh, just, just try this again. Let's just try it again. Okay, Lachlan, let's try it again, okay? How about you have a look at this and see if you can tell us what that is. A fish? Uh, in the microphone nice and clearly. A fish? A fish. Well done, Lachlan. That's awesome. You can give him a clap if you want. <laughs> Katie, what do you think? Think it's a fish? Uh, yeah. Yep, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, let's, let's try. Oh, lost it. Here we go. Lachlan, what's that one? It is a mini bread coals thing, I think. Yeah, a mini bread. A mini bread, okay. I think we need someone to make it bigger and multiply that, don't we? So we can feed lots of people. Okay, let's try. Okay, I'll try one more thing. Okay, well, let's try this one, Katie. What's that one? Uh, that's a hand sanitizer. Ah, excellent. What, what do you think, Lachlan? Well, do you agree with that? A hand sanitizer. Okay, well done. We've got hand sanitizer. And. Oh, this is an important one. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's a really teeny tiny packet of Kleenex tissues. What do you think? It's tiny toilet paper. <laughs> toilet, toilet paper. It's toilet paper. It's toilet paper. <laughs> Sorry, Katie, it's toilet paper. All right, and for one last item, this one is going to be a quick, you've got to buzz in, right? You've got to, what's your buzzer, Katie? Um, I don't know. What should it be? Any sound you like? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about you, Lachlan? Do you have a buzzer for us? Uh, Any sound? You could say, I don't know. That, that'll work? Okay. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to show the item. The first person that makes your buzzer gets to tell us what it is, okay? All right, here we go. Three, two, one. I don't know. Lachlan, well done. Very <laughs> a quick. A tree. A tree. And did you say a tree walking? No, a tree. <laughs> <laughs> a tree. Well done. Thank you, Lachlan. All right. Can you please thank our two helpers here? <clears throat> well done. <clears throat> uh, well, what we've just seen is that there was something that was impossible. It was impossible for Katie and Lachlan to tell you what my items were initially because they couldn't see. They needed their blindness to be removed. Well, we're going to see something similar today, that the disciples had a similar problem, and so do we. We can't tell who Jesus is until God opens our ears and our eyes. All right, we're going to sing our second song, uh, which is about our everlasting God who doesn't faint, doesn't get weary, and uh, is with us. I'm going to sing that now. <laughs> Upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon you. 
We're going to be looking at uh, Mark 7 and 8, so if you've got a Bible, uh, you might like to turn that up, uh, otherwise you're welcome uh, just to, to listen. I'm going to read from the start of Mark 8, and I want you to stop me if you've heard anything like this already, so as we've been working our way through Mark's Gospel, if you've heard any of this already, uh, just put your hand out or call out or physically stop me or... Keeping 1.5 meters. All right. Mark 8, verse 1. During those days, another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way because some of them have come a long distance. His disciples answered, But where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Has anyone been here the last few weeks? <laughs> Whenever you hear anything that has already come up the last few weeks, just stop me, call out. <laughs> All right. All right, what, what have you heard? What, what's already happened here? Benji. Uh, all right, well done. Nice, strong voice, and I like your, your connections there. That's right. So it was only a couple of weeks ago and a couple of chapters back in Mark 6. We've already seen Jesus do this, and he fed the 5,000. And he had, to do that, he had, what was it? How many, how many fish? Um, two. two. And how many loaves was it that he had? Five, I think you're right. Five small loaves. This is sounding very, very similar. Now, I think Jesus is he's basically doing it again. 
So he's showing his power, showing what he can do. Why? I think partly it is, well, the disciples, they haven't got it. They haven't understood just who Jesus is. So will they get it this time? Will they see just who Jesus is? If you think, yes, I'm going to put your right hand up. Yes, they're going to get it this time. Or no, your left hand. Yes, who's for yes? Who's for no? All right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to jump down. So uh, Jesus feeds the crowds. Um, there's then a little interaction with the Pharisees and talking about yeast. And then come down to verse 17, chapter 8, verse 17. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see, and ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember? He's saying, don't you remember? Like, we just did this not too long ago. But I don't think they've got the connection that they've made, that, that connection of who Jesus is. Don't think they've got it yet. So it still looks like God has a work to do in the disciples. Now, they, they don't get it, but interestingly, we, we didn't read it, but just a little bit earlier in um, chapter 7, from chapter 7, verse 28, uh, there's a woman there, and she does get it. And uh, she's from a place called um, Syrophoenicia. So if, uh, there's a map going to come up, and you can see where that is. So that's just uh, north. Is that the map? Yes, so just north of Galilee, you can see uh, Syrophoenicia. Um, so she, this lady, she's not a Jew. So this area, it's a, it's a Gentile area. Uh, but she, she, she seems to get it. She asked Jesus to heal uh, her daughter, her daughter who, who has um, some evil spirits. She, she knows, like, she, she's an outsider. She's, she's, not, she's not a Jew. But she sees who Jesus is. She believes that Jesus can, can heal her daughter. And she knows that, well, there's not really a, a place for her being a, a Gentile. But she does know that, well, there is a place uh, for her. And I love her response. Uh, she says, in, in um, response to Jesus, she says, Even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. She's referring to herself in that way. And even as a Gentile, she knows that she is part of the, the blessings that Jesus brings. Which gives us just a little glimpse that God works in all people and that Jesus is good news for all people. People from, from all nations and even, even Australia, which is great. So we're going to keep looking at this and uh, Donovan, uh, he's going to look at the, the next bit with us. Uh, thank you, Steve. <clears throat> Well, so far we've seen that the disciples, they don't get who Jesus is, but a Gentile woman does, which is extremely surprising. Why is this so? Well, the clues are in, the, are in two healings, uh, one before the feeding of the 4,000 and, and one after the feeding of the 4,000, uh, one where someone needs their ears healed and the other where someone needs their, their eyes healed. So the first healing is where someone needs their ears healed. And if we have a look at the map again, please. Um, so in Mark chapter 7 from verse 31, Jesus leaves Tyre, so up on the uh, Mediterranean Sea there, and travels down into the region of the Decapolis, which is down on the southeast of uh, the Sea of Galilee. And it's also an area that is mostly a Gentile area. And now, uh, Renee. Uh, we're going to have a look at what happens next, and Renee is going to read to us uh, Mark chapter 7, verses 32 to 33. There, are... there were some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged him to place his hand on the man. After he, after he took them aside away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers in the man's ears, and he spat and touched the man's tongue. Thank you, Renee. That sounds lovely, doesn't it? Uh, I'm just wondering, is anyone here happy to reenact that with us? If you come up here and I'll just... No? Okay, I'll, I'll use hand sanitizer. 
All right. So I, I, I thought better of it too. I thought that's probably not, not a good idea. So one of my girls has volunteered uh, something to help us visualize it a bit. Uh, it's a beautiful little bunny. The poor bunny has had to be in a plastic bag. Okay, so here we go. Here's my bunny. And this bunny is called Flopsy. Can you say hi, Flopsy? Unfortunately, Flopsy uh, has problems. Flopsy uh, is not able to hear. So uh, we're going to block off Flopsy's ears. Can you all see that? Okay, so block Flopsy's ears off because Flopsy can't hear. He didn't, didn't, she didn't hear your lovely greeting there. And oops, she can't speak either. So I'm going to put her face mask on. She can't see either. Can't, can't, oh, sorry, can't speak either. All right. Uh, well, from verse 34, Jesus then looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephatha, which means be opened. And what happened? If we look at the next verse in verse 35, at this the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. How amazing is that? Uh, okay, but we try it for Flopsy, okay? So what I want to do is after three, we all say Ephatha, all right? And we'll see if Flopsy gets healed. Here we go. One, two, three, Ephatha. No, nope, didn't work. Uh, how about, maybe we need to try it in English, okay? Well, what's it mean in English? Be opened, okay? So after three, we'll say be opened and, and surely it'll work this time. Here we go. One, two, three. Be opened. Yeah, didn't work. Why, why did it work for Jesus, though? Well, these aren't magic words, are they? Ephrathah isn't a magic word. Uh, be opened is not some magic phrase you can use. Instead, this points to the fact that Jesus is the Messiah with God's power to heal ears and tongues. Uh, please look with me at the crowd's response in verse 37. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute speak. Indeed, Jesus was showing himself not to be a magician, but the promised Messiah, and none other than God himself. In Isaiah 35, uh, verses 5 and 6, God promised to come and save his people with healing and abundant joy. Uh, then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. So this healing and this joy began when Jesus first came and will be completed when Jesus comes again. Because Jesus is the promised Messiah who would be the one who would heal ears and mouths. So I think it's probably a good time now that we can take... Uh, the earmuffs off and we'll take the mask off. There we go. Well, the second healing also shows that Jesus is the Messiah and not a magician. This time healing the eyes of the blind. Also fulfilling Isaiah 35, then will the eyes of the blind be opened. Uh, so I'm going to blindfold a flopsy. Sorry, flopsy. Flopsy can't see. Um, okay, but this time, in this healing, I'm not sure if you noticed, it's a bit strange. Anyone notice anything a bit strange about this next healing? Hand up if you thought it was a bit, something a bit odd. Yep. Okay. Um, what was the odd thing about it? Is it for you, Peter? Well, it took a couple of steps. Yeah, it took a couple of steps. Um, it seems like Jesus is having trouble uh, healing this time. Please follow with me in uh, chapter 8 now. So down to chapter 8 from verse 22. And we'll actually pop the map up first. And we'll see that uh, Jesus has, and his disciples had now come to Bethsaida, which is on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee. Uh, so some people brought a blind man and they begged Jesus to touch him. Well, in verse 23, Jesus spits and puts his hands on the man. And then Jesus asks, Do you see anything? Now, what do you think we should expect? I think, I think we probably should expect at this point something like, yes, I can see clearly now. 
I can, I can see you. I can see people walking here and there and everywhere. But no. In verse 24, the man looked up and said, I, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. It's my, my tree, my tree walking around. But Jesus didn't leave the man like this. From verse 25, once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. You see, Jesus was completely in control of this healing. And it's the only time uh, that Jesus did a miracle like this in two parts of progressive healing. So why did he do it? Uh, what's the meaning of it? We know Jesus has God's power to open the eyes of the blind and could have easily done it in one go. Well, the answer is because when Jesus is healing, he's doing lots of things. So firstly, he's showing us that he is the Messiah. Secondly, he's simply caring for people, showing compassion on people. Thirdly, he's giving a foretaste of the complete restoration that's been promised when he returns. A promise of a time when there will be no need for healing. There will be no one who is deaf, no one who is mute, and no one who is blind. There will be no sickness, no suffering, and no sorrow. Well, fourthly, Jesus is using the actual healings that he did to teach an important truth to the disciples, but also to us. These people who were physically deaf, mute, and blind needed God to open their eyes, their ears, and their mouths. Well, the disciples, they were spiritually deaf, mute, and blind. As Steve explained in uh, Mark chapter 8, uh, especially verse 18, they needed God to open their ears, mouths, and eyes. It is God's work to open eyes, ears, and mouths to who Jesus is. Uh, now, sometimes the image of uh, uh, the image here is of God zapping people. Uh, so we're going to have a little look at an excerpt of a song. Maybe you've seen it before, but have a look at this little excerpt of a song. Once I tried to run, I tried to run and hide, but Jesus came and found me, and He touched me down inside. He is like a mountie; He always gets His man, and He'll zap you any way He can. Jesus is a friend of mine. Jesus is my friend. Jesus is a friend of mine. I have a friend in Jesus. Jesus is a friend of mine. Jesus is my friend. Jesus is a friend of mine. Classic song, isn't it? So I think Je Jeff, is that okay if we maybe do that song at church soon? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, in a sense, God does zap people because it's a miraculous work that he does to open people's eyes, ears, and mouths. And so he gets all the glory. But God usually does it over time, progressively, just like the progressive healing of the blind man. Uh, as Steve mentioned, Jesus had been with the disciples for about two years, and they've learned a lot about Jesus but they still don't get it. It's like they've been seeing people as trees walking. Now, I don't know about you, but I mean, Jesus, he could have got fed up with them. But his way was to be patient with them and gently teach them some more. Uh, well, maybe you know that your experience of coming to know God was progressive. Maybe it was even so progressive that you don't even know a time when you became a Christian. Uh, that's my experience. For others, there's a fixed time. You know an actual date when you became a Christian. But then if you look at it, you know that actually behind, before that, there was a history of asking questions and finding out more about who Jesus is. The good thing is, you don't need to know all the answers. In fact, you can't know all the answers before you decide to trust Jesus. But the wonderful thing is that you can put your trust in the one who does know all the answers. So if you're here today and, or at home watching this and you're still trying to work out who Jesus is, please keep asking the questions. Please keep seeking to learn more about Jesus. Come again to church. Read your Bible by yourself. Read your Bible with a friend. Uh, ask your questions to a friend. Um, Ask Steve uh, or Edwin or Rachel. I'd be happy to chat with you. There are, and there are many people here who would love to chat with you more about who Jesus is. 
And another great option is uh, there's a course coming up. Uh, so you might like to register for Christianity Explored coming up. But if you have figured out that you are a sinner in need of forgiveness, just like me, and that Jesus is the promised Messiah, the one who died on the cross and rose again to offer forgiveness and eternal life, then put your trust in him today and keep trusting him for the rest of your life. And you can have the joy of your sins forgiven now and a lifelong relationship with God. So please don't wait. Don't put off deciding to trust Jesus because you won't regret it. But now I'm going to hand back over to Steve and uh, we're going to see how the disciples are going now. Okay, so let's uh, return to the disciples and see, see where they're at. And they're, they're with Jesus, and they're now in uh, Caesarea Philippi. So our last look at the map, and you can see where that is. So it's about um, 40 kilometers uh, north of the Sea of, of Galilee. And this place is... Uh, it's not, not a Jewish place, so uh, Gentiles uh, are there. And it was a place where over the years, many, many different gods were worshipped. And so I was there a couple of years ago. Um, so here's a photo. This is a, a grotto, and this is where the Greek god uh, Pan uh, was, was worshipped. And so Jesus is there now. He's in and around the, the villages of Caesarea Philippi. So let's, let's have a look, uh, Mark 8, verses 27 to 30, uh, and Anna is going to read that. Jesus and his disciples went to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do, you, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he said? Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Christ. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. They get it. They've got it. Peter's, Peter's able to say, Who is Jesus? Jesus is the Messiah. So in other words, he is God's promised king. That's what the Messiah is, the Christ, the promised one. Uh, he, is, he is the king. And I wonder, too, if it's not just their, their eyes and their ears uh, that have been open to this, uh, but maybe, maybe their mouth as well, uh, just like the, the man uh, who, who was uh, mute and couldn't speak and was healed. Uh, maybe now God has been at work in the disciples so they can not only see who Jesus is, that he's the Messiah, uh, but, but Peter is now able to confess that and, and say, you are the Messiah. So this is, this is really a, a climax in the gospel uh, so far. Who is Jesus? Uh, he is the Messiah. And the question that Jesus asked his disciples uh, is worth us asking ourselves uh, that same question. Uh, who do you say I am? Who do you say Jesus is? Uh, what's your answer uh, to that uh, question. Do you see him as, as a good man, a good teacher, a healer, a prophet, or the Messiah, God's promised one, uh, the King? And have, have you reached that point, uh, like Peter, uh, where you, you're able to say, yes, Jesus is uh, the Messiah. He is God's promised uh, King. Can you see God's work in you? Uh, revealing the truth of Jesus uh, to you uh, so that you can understand uh, who, who he is uh, and what it means uh, to, to, follow, to follow him. Uh, Donovan, he, he spoke a little bit about yeah, God's work in, in us and God's work in revealing Jesus to us. Maybe you can see in your own life how that um, has happened over a number of years. Or whether, yeah, there's really been that, that one point where you've been able to, to make that decision uh, for who, who Jesus is. So in all of what we've been looking at in this part of God's Word, we see that it is the work of God to open eyes and ears to who Jesus is. 
And so for me, that says how important prayer is. Uh, prayer is uh, the power of God. Kids, if there's a, a superpower that you would want, uh, what, what would it be? Any, any superpower that you could have, uh, what would it be? Would it, would it be to fly, time travel, teleport? What, what would it be? What would, you, what would you want? How about prayer? Prayer is the power of God. But talking to God, and then God, from what we're seeing here, God opening eyes, opening ears, and revealing the truth of His Son uh, to, to us. So I, I want to encourage us to, to be people of prayer. Keep praying for yourself, but pray for those in your family, friends, neighbors, uh, who don't yet know Jesus, uh, that God would do a work in them, uh, revealing who He is uh, to them. So will you pray? Will you pray uh, for God's work in your life and in the lives of those around you? Uh, will, you will you come along this afternoon to our prayer gathering, two o'clock, where we can uh, pray for people, pray for our world, pray for our community? Maybe there's a friend and you can invite them along uh, with you uh, to the, the Christianity Explored uh, so that they can hopefully come to an understanding of who Jesus is uh, or a deeper, a deeper understanding. I want to pray uh, in response to what we're looking at. Uh, and then there'll, there'll be a few other people uh, who pray as well. And then we will finish with the Lord's Prayer. So please join me as we pray. Our loving Father, we, we praise you for Jesus uh, and for who he is. Uh, the Messiah, the promised one, the King, uh, your Son whom you sent into this world so we may know you. And Father, we thank you for your work in us, in opening eyes and ears, that we might see the truth of Jesus. And Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit and his work in us, enabling us to come to faith. May you continue uh, your work in us. And we pray that there would be hundreds of people in our community who would also come to find real hope in Jesus. All to your glory. Do your work in them, we ask. Amen. Okay, now we're going to uh, have a short prayer um, of praise. And Aunt Georgia will lead us in that. Father, we... Heavenly Father, we praise you for the good, holy, faithful God you are. This whole world is yours. You made it all. You rule over it all. You provide, us, you provide for us so generously in all we have. You are patient and forgiving. So we praise you and give you thanks. Amen. And I continue a prayer of thanks and Emma will pray. Loving Father, we thank you that many people that many can enjoy a long weekend and school holidays at the moment. Thank you for a break from work and school. Thank you that many have been able to get away and enjoy time with family around our state. Thank you for the Hughes family for Mark's mission work with Global Recording Network and for their time away at the moment in Munji and Dabu. Amen. Amen. And there's a number of people um, who have had um, surgery lately, so we're going to pray for those who are recovering and Kat will lead us. Loving Father, we pray for those amongst us who have had recent surgeries and are now recovering. For Paul, Tim, Lynn, Yunushia, Mal and others, be with them and heal each one. May they know your presence with them. May they be trusting you. May they keep pushing on even when it is really hard. We thank you for those caring for them. Sustain them too, we pray. Amen. And let us all pray. Uh, and the words that Jesus taught his disciples are the words of the, the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So Donovan, I think I've, I've had a chance to have a bit more of a think about your proposal about the song. I think we're going to do that right now, actually. So, uh, no. <laughs> no, actually, no, we might not do that. Um, no, we're going to we're instead going to sing about our our living hope, um, who is who is Christ.
Heavenly Father, we give you praise for our living hope, for Jesus, that salvation is in his name. And we give you thanks and praise uh, for your grace upon us, that you enable us uh, to, to believe and to have forgiveness of sins through Jesus. Father, thank you that you set us free, that it is all your work. We give you praise and thanks for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, so pleased that you've been able to, to join us today. Uh, so I do hope that you've been uh, encouraged and built up uh, in faith. I uh, love you um, here to, to be able to, to stay around and enjoy a, a cuppa and something to eat uh, together. Uh, I believe there still are seats uh, for next week, so you can uh, register uh, online. We have our prayer gathering this afternoon, uh, 2 p.m., and the Christianity Explored course that we've uh, mentioned a couple of times today, and that's going to start uh, in a few weeks. And if you're interested you're for yourself or maybe a, a friend that you would love to, to see come along, uh, then uh, speak to Edwin about that. Uh, that would be uh, fan fantastic. And uh, for those at home, uh, as you uh, finish up, uh, whether you're, you're on your own or as a family, why don't you spend the next few minutes just praying uh, with those that you are with, uh, reflecting on what we've looked at today, but praying for one another going into this new week. Uh, how about you do that? Well, may we all uh, go and love um, and serve uh, the Lord uh, in this new week, whether you're on holidays or whether you're heading back to work, or hopefully not tomorrow, but Tuesday. Um, enjoy it. <laughs>